I added a vector thruster to Minecraft, which can be applied to the Valkyrie's physics object, like this. Since it is called a vector thruster, it means it can modify the deflection direction of the nozzle. Let's place it on the VS2 physics structure and modify the nozzle's orientation. Okay, it is spinning. Let's make it spray downward. Great, spray left. Switch right. That is it. Based on this thruster, we'll create a universal flight control computer, allowing players to enjoy the same flight control experience on aircraft of any size and weight. It all started with my previous project. So, I used a computer mod to create my first flight control program, which followed the same principles as real-world multi-rotor flight control. But the downside was that it wasn't universally applicable. The PID parameters needed to be adjusted for each aircraft model, and deployment was quite cumbersome. Me goal was to make it accessible to players without requiring specialized expertise. So I created a second version. This approach achieves universality by applying forces and torques directly to the spacecraft, but it was a compromise, as there was no better method at the time. Since there is no ready-made mod, I will develop a mod myself. My idea is to control the aircraft's attitude by adjusting the direction and thrust of each thruster. Key to this is that there shouldn't be too many restrictions on thruster placement, meaning players can freely place them anywhere on the ship. Of course, it also has to support aircraft of various sizes and weights, achieving true universality. This is a challenging task. In my vision, the angle of the vector thruster must be logical, and typically cannot rotate more than 90 degrees, which is an angle constraint. Maximum thrust also needs to be limited. Therefore, we can configure thrusters of various specifications and expose parameters such as maximum thrust and maximum angle to the flight control. With these parameters, a control effectiveness matrix can be constructed within the flight control. Then, a constrained optimization algorithm is used to solve for the target angle and thrust for each thruster, ensuring that each thruster's command is within its physical limits. This alone is not enough. For the same target force and torque, there are multiple solutions for each thruster combination. Since thrusters consume fuel based on thrust, to avoid wasting fuel, the results need to be guided towards solutions with lower thrust costs, making the flight control more energy efficient and efficient just like this. Considering that sci-fi spaceships often have deformable structures, I created a servo motor that uses sequenced instructions to execute pre-programmed commands sequentially while preserving the physical properties of the constrained objects. This allows us to create deformable spaceships or mechas in games. However, this also presents a new requirement. Users may place thrusters on constrained structures, such as on deformable wings just like this. To accommodate this, we need to identify all associated constraints for the spaceship, construct a constraint graph, and recalculate a new center of mass position, mass moment of inertia tensor, and other parameters based on the constraints. Then, we use this new constraint, related data in flight control calculations. At this point, the vector thruster flight control algorithm was complete. This experience may seem trivial, but it actually took me over a month. During this process, I endured countless iterations and version adjustments deeply understanding the difficulty and perseverance of the scientific research path. Until the moment of breakthrough, the mathematical model suddenly became clear, and the algorithm finally reached the ideal stable state. Great joy and excitement instantly surged in my heart. All the efforts and persistence were rewarded in the best way at that moment. Now that we've developed a standalone mod, we no longer need to rely on computer mods, or mods like Create, but can instead implement the entire process ourselves. 
First, we need to address the control input issue. We can't just have autopilot. We need to allow players to manually control the ship, for example, by adding a controller or controlling the seat. Considering the need for a heads-up display system, I decided to build the control seat first, allowing for the rendering of holographic images in front of the seat. The control seat must support control input from different devices, such as keyboard, mouse, and handle at the same time, and must have functions such as key binding, joystick, dead zone setting, and mouse speed setting. It also needed to allow players to save and share multiple key configurations. Given the high responsiveness requirements of FPV mode, I set the sampling rate to 125Hz instead of the Minecraft default of 20Hz. To avoid additional network overhead, I also optimize network packet transmission, sending only key changes and using bit mask compression. With this, the control module was complete. To test its responsiveness, I first built a creative mode flight controller, then added FPV mode, rate, and throttle rate. I invited my friend, an FPV pilot, to try it out. This operation is so cool and very exciting. I am also very satisfied with the 125Hz response speed, and the operation is smooth and delicate. Let's get back to the control seat. Now that the controls are complete, the next step is the heads up display. First, there is an attitude display, which needs to provide a visual representation of the current pitch and roll status, as well as basic information like speed and altitude. I referenced the style of Star Citizen and used a white tick mark to represent the horizon, which will always align with the horizon at the current altitude. In addition, areas are reserved for radar and weapon system displays. In addition to the heads-up display, a display with customizable rotation and displacement is also required. This allows direct viewing and modification of various flight control parameters, such as movement speed, rotation speed, and thruster algorithm parameters. The display can also be used to access various flight control peripherals, such as thruster status and turret status. The turret management interface also allows remote control of the turret and modification of its parameters. Next, let's briefly discuss the weapon system. I'd like to be able to achieve beyond visual range strikes in Minecraft. But the stock projectile system isn't suitable. By default, it only works within loaded chunks. To force hit detection beyond visual range, you need to force the chunks containing the projectiles to be loaded. However, if the projectile is moving extremely fast, it will pass through a large number of blocks in each tick, which will cause the game to be very laggy, as demonstrated in the video. To address this issue, I created a separate projectile system that creates an efficient and streamlined terrain cache, storing collision information for all loaded chunks. This allows projectiles to fly at high speeds within the cache, and only loads the chunk they are in when a hit occurs. This cache system defaults to caching a maximum of 4096 chunks, with a maximum memory usage of 4 megabytes. Chunks are dynamically written to a local file when they are updated, and read from the local file when the cache limit is exceeded. It is an excellent tool for large-scale Minecraft battlefields. These are two turrets that use this projectile system. In the same scenario, the muzzle velocity is also the same 1200 meters per S. Which shows that the pressure on the game's TPS is significantly reduced.
In addition to being compatible with various projectiles, this system is also suitable for missiles, torpedo, and other weapons, especially supersonic missiles. I'll cover these in detail in the next installment of this series tab. Is all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.